Hey programmers, welcome back to Software Developer Diaries. In today's video, we're gonna demystify passwordless authentication, meaning understand what it is, why you would want to use it, and then we're gonna have a practical example of integrating it into your projects using a solution like Frontech. And then we're gonna discuss what to pay attention to while implementing it. This video is based on one of my previous videos on authentication methods on the web. So if you wanna have a bit of a general overview first, make sure to check it out too. And now let's get started. There is a lot of hype about passwordless authentication nowadays, saying it's the future. But is it something worth investing your time and resources in? To answer that, let's start by defining what it actually is. Passwordless authentication is a way to configure your login, you guessed it, without a password. For example, a user might register their email and then receive a one-time code for each sign-on. Another common example of this is Slack's magic links. If you've never used it before, that's how it works. You can put in your email, hit send magic link, and you can log into Slack from your email inbox by simply following that link. While it's not as popular as other authentication methods like single sign-on or multi-factor authentication, it's sustaining a rapid growth. In fact, it is estimated that it could overtake passwords as the primary form of login within the next 10 years. But before we get into a practical example, let's discuss why you would want to use passwordless authentication rather than a traditional way of authenticating your users. Well, first of all, it improves user experience. Reports show that an average user uses 70 to 80 passwords for different platforms. As you can imagine, it's quite difficult to come up with a challenging password, let alone memorizing 80 of unique ones. It's also perfect against a brute force attack. A brute force attack is essentially a method of password guessing via trial and error. But with passwordless authentication, none of the brute force attack methods can work since it kind of acts as an additional authentication factor, which makes it challenging for attackers to steal or replicate. It can also reduce costs in the long run. Passwordless authentication solutions tend to reduce overall security costs over time, meaning you don't need to spend money on password storage, management, and resets. Okay, now that we have a good overview, let's see what we're gonna be building. Essentially, we're gonna test two popular strategies that were mentioned before, a one-time passcode and a magic link. And that's where Frontech is gonna help us. By typing frontech.com, we're gonna land on Frontech's website. And by simply scrolling down, I can already say that Frontech offers a lot of things when it comes to authentication as well as authorization. And now to start for free, we're simply gonna click on this button and it's gonna take us to a signup page. On a signup page, you have an email and a name to put, but since I already have an account, I'm gonna click on login and I'm gonna continue with Google to use my Google account. Here, I'm gonna select one of my accounts to sign in and we end up in the Frontech dashboard. Now let's go to the builder. I really love the builder page. Here you have everything to customize and make your dream login page. On the left hand side, we have everything related to authentication and authorization. In the middle, we have an example login page that's gonna show up for your users. And I'm gonna toggle GitHub and Facebook on as social logins, because why not? On the right hand side, you have themes you can choose from. I'm gonna stick to Vivid because it's kind of vibrant and I like the colors a lot. And you have a lot of other things to customize, such as your logo, your colors, your inputs, and you can change the layout however you want. And I'm gonna leave this part alone because it's already looking good in my opinion. So we're gonna scroll down to email sign-on. I'm gonna toggle this button on. And we have three options here, two of which are the ones that we already discussed, namely magic code and magic link. So we can choose between two of those, but I'm gonna leave magic code as it is because this is gonna be the first method that we're gonna test. So in the middle, you have this beautiful page that you're gonna see or your users are gonna see upon clicking on login. And now let's go back to the website and click on documentation because this is normally where you end up when you're integrating a third party service or a library. And the most important parts in the documentation for us is the builder part. 
So the first one is login box integration because we actually want to integrate that beautiful login into our app. And the second one is going passwordless under login box. So we're gonna start with the first one and I'm actually gonna choose React because why not? I like React and I'm gonna show you. So first of all, if you don't have an app, you can actually create one. And that's what we're gonna do using create React app. Now our app has been scaffolded. We are simply gonna go back to the documentation and install these additional libraries that Frontech provides. So we're gonna actually go into the project first and now install Frontech slash React and React Router DOM because for redirecting, we need the router package as well. And now step three, the configuration. I'm gonna copy all of this code and explain what it does in a second. Let's go back to the our root file in React, which is index.js, and we're gonna paste the code that we just copied. And now what we have here is Frontech provider. It's the thing that we need to wrap our app with. It's basically an element. So let's put the closing tag as well. Let's indent the insides of this tag just to make it nicer, tab and tab. Looks perfect. And now let's go back to the documentation and copy these two props that we're gonna be passing to our front tag provider. So the first prop, or actually the second prop is hosted login box equals to true. It means that our login page is gonna be hosted by Frontech itself. And that's what we need for this test, for example. And the second one is gonna be context options. This is how you connect to your Frontech account by giving a client ID and a base URL. But also don't forget to set up a callback URL. So we're gonna copy this for the future. And this is where we're gonna be setting it up. So let's go back to the builder and we already made some changes, so let's commit them. Commits here work exactly like in Git, so every time you make a change, make sure to commit it. So I'm gonna write add passwordless because that's exactly what I did now, and it's gonna push the changes. Now let's go back to the dashboard, and in the dashboard under environments, I select my development environment, and I'm gonna go to login method. Here in the hosted login, I'm gonna add a new URL, which is the redirection URL, and I'm gonna save it. As you can see, it's port 3000, the one that our React app is running. And now let's go further in the documentation. And this is our main page where our registration button is gonna show up. Let's copy it and I'm gonna explain what it does in a second. Let's go back to app.js and let's remove all these boilerplate code that create React app gives us and paste our own. So what we have here are two hooks that Frontech library exposes us use auth and use login with redirect. The latter simply gives us a login red with redirect and the first one gives us a user who is authenticated and an is authenticated Boolean value. What we're gonna do with these two? Well, in the template, we're gonna check if the user is authenticated. If so, show user data and also the access token and also a logout button. Otherwise, we're simply gonna show one button to login. And now back in the documentation, I think we're pretty much done. We put the example code, we set up the client. Oh, speaking of the client, don't forget to actually connect your Frontech integration to your profile. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go to the dashboard again, and now I'm gonna click on settings. And under the settings, what we need is the client ID and the base URL. So the base URL can be found under domains. I'm simply gonna copy this value and I'm gonna go back to the code and paste it for the base URL. Well, it's done now and the client ID can be found pretty much in the same place in under general tab. So I'm gonna client, copy the client ID as well and paste it. And that's very, very straightforward. Now we should be connected or should be able to connect to our Frontech account that we see in the UI. Well, I think we're pretty much done. Now we can start our React app. So I'm gonna write npm start. All right, and now it's putting up. Seems like our app is there. And as I said, it's simply one button. And upon clicking this, some magic is gonna happen. Let's go back to the documentation. And as I promised, we also need to check out the login box and going passwordless. And we're gonna have a couple more steps here, but they're very, very straightforward. So two strategies that we just discussed, we already set this up. And what else we have? We have, oh, 
customized email template. Turns out the emails that are gonna be sent to us upon passwordless authentication can also be customized. How cool is that? Now let's go to emails and see what we can do. Okay, I see magic link and magic code. I'm interested in the magic link. So what can we modify here? Turns out we can modify the whole email. I'm gonna change hello to maybe hey, hey, hey. And I hope we're gonna be able to see that when the email comes. So let's save the changes. Seems like my changes are saved, awesome. Now there is still one thing that we need to set up. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. It's gonna be users and accounts. Well, let's go to our React app first. We have a button that we're gonna use finally. So let's click on it. And it's gonna take us to the page that we already saw before in the builder, this beautiful page that I'm talking about. And I'm gonna put in my own Gmail. So this is my email, but think for a second. Yeah, we're using passwordless authentication, but my email is not registered anywhere. So how is it gonna know that this account even exists? For that, we need to create an actual account. So I'm gonna call Goose, give it a random ID for now because we're just testing. I'm gonna click save. And I also need to create a user and associate it with this account. So I'm gonna create a new user. I'm gonna create it for myself. So I'm gonna write Goose user give my email, it's the email that I'm gonna indicate upon login. So make sure it's the same one and associate it with an account. Now, I think we're pretty much done. All right, now we can go back to our app and be sure that when I click continue, I'm gonna get something. Well, check your email. As you can see, we simply need to go to our email and see what we have gotten from Frontech go to Gmail because I'm using Gmail. I have two emails. The second one is activation for the user that I created. And the first one is the one that I can use. So I have one time code that I can use to log in. I'm gonna copy it, go back to the page and paste it in and it automatically logs me in. And it uses this callback that we put in before. And now we're logged in as Goose. How cool is that? That was really, really fast and easy to set up. Now let's log out because I wanna also try the magic link. Let's see how magic link works. I'm gonna simply, simply select magic link and commit again. I'm not gonna write something meaningful. So change passwordless method to magic link and I'm gonna commit this again. Well, now it's committed, awesome. What we're gonna do is simply go back to our app, click log me in and we are seeing our beautiful page again. I'm gonna put my email and press continue and see what happens now. All right, magic link sent. Now I'm gonna go back to my Gmail and I already got a new email and I'm clicking on it. Well, I'm not sure if you saw this, but let's go back for a second and you're gonna see this, hey, 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 that's the email that I edited a couple minutes ago. How cool is that? Your custom email. And I'm gonna click on this magic link it's gonna redirect me to the React app and log me in. As you can see, I'm logged in as myself again. We literally spent five minutes and we already have a passwordless authentication. There are a couple of things still left to mention. Namely, what are the disadvantages of such a way of authentication? Well, let's be honest and admit that nothing can guarantee 100% that a system cannot be hacked. Even if you combine all the possible authentication methods and strategies, there is still a room for mistakes one could make that's gonna leave the system a bit more vulnerable. What I mean is the following. First of all, if someone steals your device or you lose it, you're in trouble. An attacker who gets their hands on your device can use it to intercept all one-time codes and magic links that are sent over email. Or some kind of a malware can take screenshots and record everything that's happening on the device screen. And the last thing is costs. But hey, didn't we say that it can reduce the costs in the long run? And now you're saying the opposite? No, it all depends on services that you use to send those one-time codes and magic links, and of course the frequency of those emails. As long as you choose a good solution like Frontech, costs shouldn't be a concern. Let me know in the comments below if passwordless is something you've tried or at least curious about. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new today. Thanks for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one.